in that quantum everything field of God and love. We're all one. Mm -hmm. And what's true is true. Your mind is holy because God created you out of himself. And ideas never leave their source. So you could never, ever, ever be outside of that light, no matter how hard you try. So doesn't that feel good? And can you imagine if you focused only on that, that you are what God made, if you focused only on that, you would be enlightened rather quickly, meaning so aware, so awakened. And there could be no suffering because love and light cannot suffer. So we have to know that when we suffer, we are still holding guilt in the mind and that core belief, which is, I think I could be separate from God, that core belief is, is why you feel guilty. That's where guilt comes from. And like I was saying last week, Christine, if you're out there, uh, we missed your question, so I'd like to answer that now. You asked something about, um, could I talk about guilt again? And yeah, guilt is the culprit. And guilt comes from believing that you made yourself because you turned your back on God. So you had to make up something else. See, when you know you're one with this holiness inside of you, then your senses are used to enjoy the beauty and the graces of this world. But when you forget that and you think you've totally thrown God away, then you feel really scared, frightened, and guilty and very afraid that you are going to be punished by God. And so to get rid of that fear, that guilt, you project it out into the world, but you're still scared. You'll never get rid of the fear until you turn the other way and go back to the light and remember who you are. So as long as you have any distressing thought, it doesn't matter what the thought is. If it's causing you any irritation, frustration, upset, anger, grief, all of the emotions that we are reacting to, you know, all these thoughts that we're reacting to that cause these really heavy emotions, it's all stemming from guilt. And guilt always seeks punishment. And the minute you start to ask the Holy Spirit, which is in your right mind, to help you, to awaken you, to shine light on this mistaken thought, she comes to your rescue. I like to call the Holy Spirit she. I know she's referred to as he, doesn't matter, gender, who cares. In truth, there is no, there's one. But when we travel to Egypt, the Holy Spirit is always Isis. She's the, the feminine action. She's energy in motion. So she's the voice for God. And the Christ is that still small voice within, inside of you. But you'll hear that voice through the Spirit, the voice for the One. So when you start working with the Holy Spirit, miracles happen. Guilt is the problem. Mm -hmm. And the world's going to mirror your guilt. It will. People will show up upsetting you. They will show up irritating you. And you'll blame 
get them away, get lost, go away, and it um, doesn't work because you're meant to forgive it, which means to let go of the illusion that there is actually a world. Let go of that thought that they could actually do something to you. It's all coming from your mind, from your guilty mind. And once you shine light on all of that darkness, you begin to feel peaceful and you really recognize that the world is but a dream. It's, a, it's kind of a nightmare that you've projected because you made a fake self separate from God and you're running scared. Look at the world now. Oh my goodness. This world is a big, huge outpicturing of the insanity of a belief system that's rooted in guilt. And it's like a big movie, a horror movie, with all the characters showing us mirroring who we are, who we believe we are. Yeah, we forgot that my mind is holy. If I'm created in the image and likeness of God, and that I could never be separate from that, and I actually believe that, guess what I would do? Miracles, just like Jesus did. Jesus healed the blind, he raised the dead, he walked on water, right? He multiplied the fishes and the loaves of bread. He, he did all kinds of miracles. <clears throat> and why could he do miracles? Because he knew the world was fake. It wasn't real. That's why he could just, just like when we go to the ashram and we see Sai Baba, <clears throat> excuse me, we see Sai Baba manifesting out of thin air. How can he do that? Well, it's because masters know the world is not real. It's an illusion. And because they know that all the way from head to toe, they're working with laws that are not of this world. So can you imagine what you could do if you completely dropped the belief in this crazy world? You would be doing everything that Jesus did and more. He even says it in the Bible. Jesus says, all these things that I have done, you will do and much more than this. Yeah, no joke. He wasn't kidding. So I think, especially now, you know, the light that's pouring, this outpouring of light coming to our planet now is so intense that if we sit in meditation, I don't know if any of you have noticed, but have you noticed that your psychic center seems to be more open now? A lot of people are reporting this. They feel more in touch. They feel almost telepathic. Do you notice that, Jamie? Yeah. Yeah, it's because, remember, our planet is geophysically moving to a higher dimension. So there is so much light coming out of the galactic core of our universe. And this light is illuminating our minds. So if you sit and meditate just for a few minutes, five minutes, doesn't take much. You can tap into that light. It's so healing. And now's the time because things are rocking and rolling. Yep, for all, all of you following my astrology class with um, these alignments that lie ahead of us, there's a lot of good news in, in that too. There's nothing just all one side, right? But we've got some planetary alignments that are bringing up a lot of chaos. So it would really be good to take advantage of this immense outpouring of light that is available to each and every one of us. Yeah. Okay. Anything there? All right. So 
we are going to be reading the final section that's under, it's in the section, the supplements in the Course in Miracles, which is uh, forgiveness, and we've covered forgiveness and healing, and now we're getting to the very last chapter, which is the holiness of healing. The holiness of healing. Jamie's going to post where that is. It's just the part, section one. Yep, yeah, section one. The holiness of healing. How holy are the healed? Suyin says, yeah, I noticed I talk too much recently. Talk too much. Hmm. Yeah, I talk too much recently. Uh-huh. Yeah, different things are, are happening to different people, kind of distractions. You know, we're so afraid of God, really. We're afraid of love. So with that outpouring of, of light coming in, it's almost, if I sit quiet and connect with that light, for many people they've said to me, I feel like I'm afraid of the light. I'm afraid of God. If I tell the truth, I'm afraid of God. That's how deep that guilt in your mind is. You really believe you've done something so bad, so wrong. Uh-huh. So, you know, all these distractions come up. Talking is one of them. Talking incessantly is a distraction from not looking or dealing or, you know, not that you have to be quiet 24-7, but, you know, sometimes you come home from a, a meeting with a friend and you think, why did I talk so much? Mm-hmm. So it's good you're noticing that. Yeah. Okay. So how holy are the healed? We're very holy because once you're healed, it means that you have forgiven the dream. That's what healing is. <clears throat> and that's why only a healed healer really heals. <coughs> because when you know that sickness is not real, being broke is not real in truth, when you know these things are not real, now you can help somebody heal. Otherwise, what ends up happening is you identify with their problem and then you try to fix the problem with a solution that's coming from this world. So again, it's just trying to fix the problem and make it better, make the world a better place, but never heal the mind. So the holy are so beautifully pure because their minds are healed. They laugh at the illusion and now they have great compassion for you. For in their sight, their brothers share their healing and their love. So they don't see you as a body. They don't see you with a sickness. They don't see you with a scarcity problem. They don't see you with anything else but Christ's vision. They see you in the same way they see themselves. They know that you have the same power in you that they have. And it's so wonderful, you know, when you hold that, that place, that space of love for someone, for truth, it really helps that person to come out of their sleep, to come out of their nightmare. But if you identify with that, problem they're facing, you both sink. That is why the holy, the healed are really holy because they've gone past the, the illusion completely. Oops, something there? Mary, I agree that I am lately more distracted with current issues and in turn forget. Yeah, Mary. Hi, Mary. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's a sick attraction to guilt. There's a sick attraction to sickness. There's a sick attraction to fear. There is a sick attraction to the news. There is a sick attraction to the illusion. That is how deep the guilt in the mind is. It has made you convinced 
that this world is real. Co coronavirus is real. The flu is real. All these things are real. But to the master who has a healed mind, none of it is real. So the question is, what is my sick attraction to fear? Remember love or fear? Sickness is fear. The news is fear-based. There's an attraction to all of that stuff. We so want to make the fear right. We want to make the fear right and love impossible. And that's all the ego tripping you up. Uh-huh. So, another question? Oh, good. I love questions. Yeah, comments. Uh, there is a sick attraction to YouTube comments. I'm surrendering that one. <laughs> yeah, Jen. Sick attraction to YouTube comments. <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, so we're letting that go. Yeah, because people always think, well, you know, if I don't keep myself distracted with all of these things in the world, I'm going to be bored. Right? I've heard people say, oh, it must be boring to be a monk. It must be boring to be, you know. But it is a world that is so filled with joy. It's all encompassing. There's nothing else. But for those that are so attracted to entertaining the ego with more ego stuff, then it's just the cycle of insanity. So we have to stop it and get back into alignment and, and feel that joy. Why are you afraid of love? Why are you afraid of stillness? Why are you afraid of not knowing the YouTube comments, right? Why are you afraid of, you know, people tell me they're on social media. Listen, I don't have, I don't go to social media. I don't even know. I have Anchoring the Light Facebook, which Jamie, Jackie, and Jennifer run. I very rarely go there. I'm never on social media because it is a waste of my precious time. Because I find more joy in doing things like creating cleaning my house, being happy with what is. Why would you waste three hours looking at YouTube comments? That's the question. Why am I wasting time? There's something you're getting from it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jen. Uh-huh. Okay. You are not alone, Mary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people tell me all the time they spend like three hours on Facebook. What the heck? What the heck? You are being controlled. You are allowing yourself to be controlled. The question is, why? You think there's something in this world you're going to miss out on? Why would you care about this world in that sense? And yet, when you wake up from the dream with a holy mind, you'll still be in this world, but it will be on another frequency that is so beyond what you're experiencing now. So what is the sick attraction to being distracted? Mm -hmm. Thank you guys. Okay, so the holy are healed and they are bringers of peace. I am a bringer of peace. What a beautiful function. I am the Holy Spirit's voice. It doesn't mean you run around town preaching but you're here to inspire you're here to connect so bringers of peace speak with the holy spirit's voice through whom she speaks for god because remember the holy spirit is the voice for god the minute you're on youtube i'll just use this one okay so the minute you distract yourself and you start getting on YouTube, you can be sure you start judging the comments. Oh, that comment sucked. Oh, that was awful. Oh my God, that, oh, 
So now you're finding all your judgments. So you could actually use it to find your judgments. The Holy Spirit is in your right mind. The minute you're on YouTube and you're full of judgments, the Holy Spirit goes with you. And if you can catch yourself and you say, wow, I just found a whole bunch of judgments as I sit here looking at the comments on YouTube. And they're not about the people that you're judging. It's about the guilt that you're holding in your own mind. And then you ask the Holy Spirit, oh my gosh, take this. I, I need to forgive this chaos in my mind, right? So you could use it too. All right. Uh, was not well, lying in bed for the past four days, nose congested and dizzy, trying hard to recover, feeling guilty. There is so much to do at the center and yet the body cannot function. A revelation that I need to, yeah, Doreen, hi, absolutely, absolutely. The ego will just attack you, especially when you're not feeling well, it will attack you. So I love that you're able to catch that, feeling guilty, uh-huh, yeah, you're catching it. And you're saying, you know, because you're a course student, Doreen, you can ask yourself, all right, I'm not feeling well, I have the sniffles, I feel congested. What thoughts was I holding in my mind before I became physically ill? Because it's by your thinking that you manifested the sniffles. And again, it's not to beat yourself up and think you're bad or you're a failure as a spiritual warrior, uh-uh. Because remember, we talk sickness is an opportunity to go deeper within and to question the mind, to question the thoughts in your mind. So you're probably holding some attack thoughts and eventually they manifest as a cold. You're doing it all. Uh-huh. So that's a, that's a great opportunity as you lie in your bed to think about that. And then all those negative thoughts, you turn them over. You give them to spirit and get back into alignment with the light, rest, the body needs rest, so, you know, but here's, here's the beauty of this. The minute you forgive it all, you can have a spontaneous healing because you made the sickness by believing in the ego and you can cure by dispelling your belief from the ego, withdrawing it. You can dispel the ego when you withdraw your belief. Isn't that amazing? We're doing it all. Okay. Yep. Oh, I love the questions. It's like we're all here together chatting. Okay. Mom. Hi, Daniel. How are you doing? All right. Oh, you got it down to 20 minutes on social media. Okay, good. So, Jen, before I get to the next question, what you want to do is if you find yourself in an unconscious moment where you're you know, surfing, doing whatever you do, and you notice those judgments, wow, say this is an opportunity to know about the guilt in my mind. These attack thoughts that I'm seeing, you know, the, in these comments are mine. And those are mine to turn over, give to the spirit and have my mind cleansed. Okay, awesome. Daniel, how do I best help a friend who is constantly in and out of depression, feeling emptiness in his life and inertia. You can't do anything but hold truth. Do not identify with his depression, his depression. See him whole, healed, holy, and perfect. Do not convince him not to be depressed. Do not say, you know, you shouldn't feel this way. Look at you have a beautiful family. You've got your job. You've got a good paycheck. People, when they're facing depression, none of that, they don't want to hear that. Depression is anger turned inward. Anger comes from guilt held in the mind. What is the guilt? I think I'm separate from God. And if you think you're separate from God long enough, you're going to get depressed. It's always the problem. But if you show up, Daniel, with a healed mind, right? Meaning that 
You don't believe in depression. You don't identify with sickness and you simply be a space of love for him. In other words, you're not trying to fix him. You're just there with him. If he calls you, the best thing you can do is ask a question. Just ask questions. And, and, and if he calls you on the phone and you hear his voice, on the other end, in that moment, ask for the Holy Spirit because you will be guided and given the perfect words to say to him. But your job is to see him already healed and not identify with that, the inertia, the this, the that. Don't identify with any of it. Listen, I've been seeing a lot of people lately who are dealing with sudden psychosis. Yep. This is a sign of the times. And, the, you know, some are in their 40s, some are in their early 20s. Just suddenly they were quote unquote normal. And then they started hearing voices and they started, you know, doing funny things. And they were not like that before. Because with God, without God in our lives, without that connection, Without, I mean, this is, it's, this is what's happening. People are getting depressed. Mental illness is on the rise. Because when you are trying to live your life separate from God, you're going to be depressed. And all of you listening to me are light workers, which means you've been prepared. You know that these times were coming to the planet. This shift of ages it's been destined going from Pisces to Aquarius. We are in the birth canal and you have been prepared. You doing your course or whatever other teacher or whatever it is you're following, whatever other Dharma, whatever you're doing, you have been preparing for this time and you must continue to because there are going to be many people who are going to lose it. And you cannot identify with what they believe they've lost. You have to keep that light on a lamp post. And um, for them, yeah, Daniel, can't fix them. You just have to hold truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good job, Doreen. Yeah, Daniel, I hope that helps you because... Um, you know, I can't even tell you how many in the last little while that I have either talked to personally, counseled, or been told about people having bipolar attacks, psychosis, out of the blue, depression. It's rampant. Yeah, and think of it this way. When there's that much light coming to the planet, it is pushing down and pushing out the darkness. So what we're seeing is the collective shadow. And people are afraid. And it's, it's their own guilt they're afraid of. But they don't know that. But you guys do. So you've got to say true for the light. And know that with God all things are possible. Pray for him. You can say things in your heart like the Christ in me evokes the Christ in you. The God in me loves and honors the God in you. The God in me is whole, perfect, and complete, and therefore the God in you is whole, perfect, and complete. I call it forth now. And you can say these things in your heart. Yeah, that's, that's good, Daniel. Okay. So you are a bringer of peace. Remember, make peace your goal. Your voice, this is the empowerment of the fifth chakra. The throat chakra is to be used by the Holy Spirit. Many of us are stuck in third dimension and your voice is being used by the will of the ego. But your voice is meant to be used by the Holy Spirit. It is the activation of the throat chakra. Through, uh, through whom she speaks for God whose voice she is. Such are God's healers. That's you. You're God's healer. Let this throat chakra be a brilliant turquoise blue. 
filled with infinite grace, serving your Father, glorifying the good, and having every word you say be that of wisdom coming directly from the guidance you receive from the Holy Mother, the light. They but speak for him and never for themselves. And, th and there it is. If you're speaking for yourself, you're speaking with the ego. And the ego thinks it knows. But when you turn your voice over to the spirit, it's just, and you've all had these experiences where you think, I, who said that? Like, I didn't even know I knew that. This is the beauty of the spirit coming through you. So you will speak for the spirit and not for the ego, not for yourself. They have no gifts, but those they have from God. In other words, all your talents, every gift that you have, it doesn't matter what it is. It's not yours. It's been given to you by God for the God to use. So every gift, when you say, let's say you're a singer, and before you go on stage, every song you sing, you say, dear God, let this be a song of love for all to hear, no matter what that song is, on behalf of your love, your light. You're serving something higher. Your gift is used to serve something higher. You have nothing to do with it. And those and these they share because they know that this is what he wills. God's will for you is to get out of the way and let him do the work through you. How beautiful. It's effortless. That's what Jesus did. He said, of myself, I, I do nothing. It is my Father who doeth all things through me. You're like an empty vessel. And the Spirit, God, the power, will use this vehicle, this instrument, like Krishna playing the flute, you will be used if you get out of the way. And they're not special. Those that, that are healed, they know their holiness because they know they're one with God, so they don't feel special in any way. If you feel special, you're in the ego's domain. When you feel holy, it's because you're in the mind of God and you know it. And so there's a beautiful humility there. And they can, um, they have chosen holiness and given up all separate dreams of special attributes through which they can bestow unequal gifts on those less fortunate. And that's what the ego does. Holy people don't. The ego says, well, you know, I'm a better musician than them. And if they just took, uh, came to me and learned the way I play, they could be even better. This is all the, the specialness and the bull crap, as they say, of the ego. It's just ridiculous. But in, in, the, in God's domain, in this side, where only love is real, all are welcomed. Everyone has something wonderful to contribute to the whole. Everyone. Everyone is unique and beautiful in their own way. Their healing has restored their wholeness. See, forgiveness, that's what healing is. My mind is healed when I no longer identify with the world. Whoa, think about that. My mind is healed when I no longer identify with YouTube comments. Yeah, my mind is healed when I give forth the dream of separation. So their healing has restored their wholeness so they can forgive and join the song of prayer. Remember the song of prayer is where the son, you, sing praises to the father in that oneness. Yeah. So we have a, a question. Putting oneself down is also the ego. Oh yes, Mary. You were created out of love. Would love ever put you down? No. Love would see you as itself. But the ego to keep you on its side will tell you you're such a loser. 
and it will tell you that you're ugly and it will tell you that your body is gross and it will tell you that your eyes aren't pretty enough and that your hair isn't nice enough. That's what it's designed to do. And eventually it wants you dead, but not itself. Love only sees itself in others. To all my beloved other selves, we're all one. But the ego is about divide and conquer. Just like what's happening in the United States and in the world. Divide and conquer. The spirit is connection. Oneness. Yeah. So if you hear that voice, you just say to the spirit, I give you this nonsense. I give this to you. Heal my mind. You go girl Mary. <laughs> yeah hey Susan love you I'm grateful for you I'm grateful yeah okay so then the healing has restored their heal their wholeness so that means my forgiveness has restored my holiness because I no longer identify with the dream. I never make the error real, say to yourself, no matter what anyone has done in their life. In the words of Maya Angelou, if they knew better, they would do better. Why would I hold them down by seeing them as these wretched, bad people? No, I look past the error and see the holiness and maybe in my holding truth for them, they can snap out of it. That's what we're here to do. As witness to forgiveness, aid to prayer, and the effect of mercy truly taught, healing is blessing. When your mind is healed because you have forgiven the world, all you do is bless. Really, all you do is bless and you see the goodness in all things. You just do. You can't help it. You're not here to judge. You're not here to condemn. You're not here to make wrong. You're here to bless and to see the beauty. Let God use your eyes to see the glory, to see the radiance, to see the twinkles of stars in the sky, to see those dancing fireflies in a dark night. That's what you have eyes for. So God can see itself in all these things. How sweet is that? Give your eyes to God and you'll see differently. So it's aid to prayer and the effect of mercy truly taught healing is a blessing and the world responds in quickened chorus through the voice of prayer. Because when you know who you are in oneness, all you do is sing praises. All you do is bless. That is true prayer. Prayer is praise. I praise you, God. Look at this. I praise you. Oh, look at how cute that is. I pray. Look at that. Everything you see is beautiful because you're in the mind of God. So therefore, God is in everything. Forgiveness shines its merciful reprieve upon each blade of grass and feathered wing and all the living things upon the earth. Oh, everything is set free when you forgive the dream. Everything gets to be as it is, without you judging good or bad, right or wrong, up or down, left or right. It just gets to be. Fear has no haven here, for love has come in all its holy oneness. Thank God. Thank God. Time remains only to let the last embrace of prayer rest on the earth an instant as the world is shined away. You hold true to truth. And that light in you shines the world away. And now you're in the world, but you're not of the world. It's just so beautiful. This instant, 
is the goal of all true healers. That's your goal, healer. That's your goal. Whom the Christ has taught to see his likeness and to teach like him. Wow. And to walk on water and raise the dead and multiply the loaves, change the water into wine. Greater things shall you do than did Jesus when you forgive the dream. Would you rather that or watch YouTube comments? Jin, I just have to use that because you're so cute. Okay. Think what it means to help the Christ to heal. Can anything be holier than that? No. God thanks his healers. For he knows the cause of healing is himself. His love. His son restored as his completion and returned to share with him creation's holy joy. You will be one with everything God and and all you could do then is sing. That's why singing is a highest form of praise. Singing. Oop. If you have Okay, hi QB. If you have a medical condition like diabetes that is inherited from family genes, what kind of guilt is this? How do we learn to heal this condition? Oh, that's a great question. The first thing you have to do is know that the condition is an effect coming from the cause which is a wrong-minded thought held in your mind. The body will manifest your thoughts. And then we call it, and this is deep, QB, so you've got to, you know, just food for thought. Be gentle with yourself. But we have these things called linear genetic diseases coming down from ancestors, blah, blah, blah. And because we all buy into that concept, it becomes a reality. But only love is real, which means sickness does not exist in a mind that's healed. Diabetes is a result of a wrong-minded thought held in the mind an attack thought. Thoughts like, I'm dumb, I'm ugly, I hate her, I don't like that, I hate this. It, it, they're judgments and attack thoughts held in the mind, deep, 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 deep. And those are the result, those thoughts are the result of believing that you are separate from God. That's the first form of guilt. And this is deep. It's, you know, it's, it's deep. It's something for you to contemplate on. And, you know, you can go to lesson 136 in the Course in Miracles. Sickness is a defense against truth. Because the ego is out to prove that sickness is real and God is not. The ego is out to prove that sickness is real and so is pain and will give you a di you know diabetes and maybe you have to take an injection these are all it's 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 as though you're saying at some level see god i'm weak and frail that's why i have this and if you really were god i wouldn't be sick that's kind of what's at the at the bottom of this belief but it's very unconscious so we want to first open our mind and expose the negative thoughts that we're holding on to. Like, what is my sick attraction to illness? You know, and um, it's like with Doreen's question there, be gentle. You're not here to, to beat yourself up, but to say, wow, this is interesting that I, I have diabetes and it's interesting that I believe 
that it is a genetic disease because that's part of the script of the ego's world of illness that we have genetic illnesses and then we have you know well cancer if, if your mother had cancer well you probably get cancer too and we all bought into this ego script that is based on sickness lack scarcity okay so start with just opening your mind and saying huh is it possible that I could heal this? Yes, because with God all things are possible. So, Holy Spirit, help me to see the darkness in my mind. I'm willing to look at my fears. And just very gently, very slowly, very, you know, calmly look with the Holy Spirit at the contents of your mind and shine light on them and give them up. And you could start noticing things like maybe your amount of, of medication ends up has to be cut back or little things, you know. This is the miracle. Remember, when your mind is holy, you have completely forgiven the guilt in the mind, which is belief in this world of sickness, lack, scarcity, separation. Yeah, good question. Yes, that's right. Hi, Dina. When you sing, you pray twice. Absolutely. And boy, can you sing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, where was I? Don't ask for partial healing. See, so this would be for QB because it's like, dear God, can you heal this diabetes? That's like... A partial healing it's healing you're asking for a false healing it's like I want to have my body healed so I want to have a better dream in my dream so I'm still in the nightmare called separation but now my body's healed so now I think I'm healed we talked about that last week so we don't want to ask for partial healing we want to ask for the healing of the mind because when the mind is healed the body is an effect of a misdirected thought. So when the mind is healed, the body will catch up. Okay? So do not ask for partial healing, nor accept an idol for remembrance of him whose love has never changed and never will. And, you know, an idol is, you know, pills, magicking your way to health and, and wholeness. Um... And of course, we have to take our medicine, of course we do, but don't accept these as the real deal. You're, you're masking, you're still masking a problem. The problem is the mind. And so we take our insulin for diabetes. And Jesus is saying, don't, don't ask for partial healing or, and don't accept an idol for remembrance. So... Don't accept that that's the end. If, if you do get healed in body because of the medicine you're taken, taking, still know that if you've only healed that part, but you haven't healed the mind by removing the attack thoughts and judgments, then the sickness will show up somewhere else. You are as dear to him as is the whole of his creation. For it lies in you as his eternal gift. What need have you for shifting dreams within a sorry world? We just shift around in this box, right? Trying to find healing, happiness. We go to one corner, to the next corner, buy a new house, get a new car, get this, get... You're just shifting things around in a sorry world. Do not forget the gratitude of God, see? Love, praise, and gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you for this so-called diabetes because I now realize it is an opportunity for me to go deeper inward and have my mind cleansed. Never forget gratitude for God. Do not forget the holy grace of prayer, which is where the song, the son sings praises to the Father. Do not forget forgiveness of God's Son, 
Never make the error real, no matter what anyone has done, look past the mistake. They made a mistake. They knew better, they do better. You must forgive. Here is the formula to get a healed mind. It's a miraculous healing formula. Number one, you must forgive. You gotta look past the illusion. That person believes they're sick. That person believes they're depressed. And forgiveness for you means, as a healer, to look past the illusion that they are trapped in. Okay? Um, the next thing is to pray. And that's true prayer. And true prayer means you are acknowledging the truth about you. You are what God made, full stop. Your mind is holy. That is prayer, true prayer. And number three, and, and then you are healed. And that requires nothing but to accept that the Holy Spirit and you are one, that the Holy Spirit is in your right mind, always in your mind. And uh, there's, what more is there to do when you accept that? So first, uh, forgive, then you pray, and then I accept that I am one with the Spirit. When you, ex when you do these three things, then you will no longer accept the pains of this world because your mind is healed. And you will not identify with anybody's suffering. You can only be so compassionate when you don't identify. When you see past the illusion that they're trapped in, that is forgiveness. Be you healed, even as I am healed. That's, that's the message of the healed healer. Be you healed, even as I am healed. Just think about that. Doesn't that feel right? Be you at peace, as I am at peace. What a prayer to say to someone who is suffering. Think about that. A healed mind is peaceful. Be you at peace as I am at peace. Be you healed as I am healed. Wow. That calls forth so much power in that other person. For all is forgiven. For all is forgiven. Your prayer has risen up and called to God who hears and answers. You have understood that you forgive and pray, but for yourself. There is nobody else. That guy that's depressed is you. Yeah, all those comments on YouTube that you judge are your thoughts. This world is a mass hallucination projected from your mind. And then we point the finger. But when my mind is healed, I have forgiven the illusion. I look past the illusion. And now I can walk on water. I can multiply the loaves and fishes. I can change the water into wine because this chaotic world, the laws of this world, do not apply to me. The I am looks past all of that and it's operating on a higher level of universal principle. And in this understanding, you are healed. There's nothing to heal but your own mind. In prayer, you have united with your source and understood that you have never left. This level cannot be attained until there is no hatred in your heart and no desire to attack the Son of God. Those comments that you read with judgment, you are attacking a Son of God. So there's only one place to heal, 
and that is in your own mind. Never forget this. It is you who are God's son, and as you choose to be in to him, so are you to yourself and God to you. Nor will your judgment fail to reach to God, for you will give the role to him you see in his creation. Do not choose a miss. Choose love or you're going to follow fear. It's a habit. Love is a choice I must make. Or you will think that it is you who are creator in his place. You did not create yourself. God created you. And you have nothing to worry about when you align with that because that power will come through you. And he is then no longer cause, but only an effect. Now healing is impossible. When you forget God, you can't be healed. You won't heal. You will put a band-aid on a bobo, but you won't heal because only the mind at one with spirit can heal. You of yourself can do nothing. So all these, these false healings that take place at the physical level are false healings because you're healing only the symptom. The God in your mind, the light in you, is the healer of all things. And it is the thoughts in the mind that need to be cleansed and purified. He is blamed for your deception and your guilt. He who is love becomes the source of fear. For only fear can now be justified. You see that he's just talking about here that when you put God in the back seat and you're in the front seat and you're managing your life without anything but the ego, you become afraid of God and you, you, you think God is powerless in your life and God is a God in your own image and likeness and you're just operating every day in lack, scarcity, fear, attack, judgments, concepts, constructs, all made up by the ego's thought system. You're a fake self in a fake world trying to heal a fake symptom that you believe is real. I know, at the end of the day. Vengeance is his. His great destroyer, death and sickness, suffering, and grievous loss become the lot of everyone on earth, which he abandoned to the devil's care, swearing he will deliver it no more. This is the God you made when you follow the ego. God is a vengeful God. God is a hateful God. God is mean. God is cruel. God would never make me suffer. God this, God that. <laughs> this is all the ego. Come unto me, my children, once again without such twisted thoughts upon your hearts. You still are holy with the holiness which fathered you in perfect sinlessness and still surrounds you with the arms of peace. Remember the trees? You are, the world is sanctified by your holiness. The waves bow down to you. The trees extend their arms to hug you. They drop their leaves and form a carpet of love for you to gently walk upon. That's how holy you are. Dream now of healing. Then arise and lay all dreaming down forever. For are he your father loves. You are he your father loves. Who never left his home, you've never left nor wandered in a savage world with feet that bleed and with a heavy heart made hard against the love that is the truth in you. Give all your dreams to Christ and let him be your guide to healing, leading you in prayer beyond the sorry reaches of the world. He comes for me and speaks my word to you. I would recall my weary son to me from dreams of malice to the sweet embrace of everlasting love and perfect peace. My arms are open to the son I love. That's you. Who does not understand 
that you are healed. You are healed. And that your prayers have never ceased to sing your joyful thanks in his unison, in unison with all creation, in the holiness of love. Be still an instant. Underneath the sounds of harsh and bitter striving and defeat, there is a voice that speaks to you of me. There is a voice in you speaking to you. It wants to guide you. Open the channels to hear the voice. Hear this an instant and you will be healed. Hear this an instant and you will be saved. Help me to awake my children from the dream of retribution and a little life beset with fear. Look at the world. We are being asked, help me. This is the Christ. Who are Christ conscious beings coming under the order of Melchizedek? These are the Buddhas. These are the high level masters. These are the Christ conscious beings asking you for help. Help me to awaken my children from the dream of retribution and a little life beset with fear that ends so soon it might as well have never been. We are being asked for help in these changing times. Let me instead remind you of eternity in which your joy grows greater as your love extends along with mind beyond infinity where time and distance have no meaning. You are being asked to serve the Christ light right now. While you wait in sorrow, heaven's melody is incomplete because your song is part of the eternal harmony of love. You have something to offer. Your light is so brilliant. The world is waiting for your light. The world is waiting for your love. Without you is creation unfulfilled. Creation is not complete without you. Return to me who never left my son. Listen, my child, your father calls to you. Do not refuse to hear the call for love. Do not deny to Christ what is his own. Heaven is here and heaven is your home. You can have it right now. Creation leans across the bars of time to lift the heavy burden from the world. Lift up your hearts to greet its advent. See the shadows fade away in gentleness. The thorns fall softly from the bleeding brow of him who is the Holy Son of God. That's you. You are the Holy Son of God. How lovely are you, child of God, child of holiness. How like to me are you? How lovingly I hold you in my heart and in my arms. How dear is every gift to me that you've made. Who healed my son and took him from the cross. Every brother that you meet that's depressed, sad, hurt, broke, Get them off the cross. That's what that means. You be healed in your mind and call forth in them their greatness. Get them off the cross. Arise and let my thanks be given you. And with my gratitude will come the gift first of forgiveness, then eternal peace. So now, Return your holy voice to me. Your voice, your throat chakra needs to be activated by the Holy Spirit to be used for the healing of the world. The song of prayer is silent without you. The universe is waiting for your release because of its own. Be kind to it and to yourself. And then be kind to me. I ask but this, that you be comforted and live no more 
in terror and in pain. Do not abandon love. Remember this. Whatever you may think about yourself, whatever you may think about the world, your Father needs you and will call to you until you come to Him in peace at last. How beautiful is that? How beautiful is that? And this is why we're here. To heal our minds, to be cleansed of all the ugliness that we've so believed in for lifetimes. And to return to that lovely place where only love is real. So, wasn't that great? Thank you to the beautiful Christ Consciousness that comes to us through A Course in Miracles. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I've always been diseases are inherited. Yeah. Yeah, taught that diseases are inherited. Yeah, because remember the, the ego script is based on fear. So there's a whole big story around, oh, this disease comes down from, you know, it's it, diabetes skips every other generation. I've heard that one and all this. And then we're like, woo, you know, what generation am I? Oh, good. I'm not that one. So I won't get it. You know, all these things. So yeah, it's really good food for thought. Uh-huh. Yeah, Dina, I love this too, because, you know, we love those words that make us feel <gasps> there's a vibration. There's a frequency to the words that's coming from the Course in Miracles and all holy books that are coming from the light. You feel them. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You're most welcome, Cecilia. And Dor oh, I miss all you, all you beautiful people. So listen, I'm going to be back on Wednesday night and we're continuing with the last six houses of the zodiac and much more oh there's so much going on in the sky crazy anybody feel the uh, eclipse energies yesterday and the week leading up to it yeah if you're sensitive you can you know pick up on that and uh hey that love you girl yeah beautiful jesus yeah yeah okay so i hope i see you all on wednesday come with an empty chart and uh have have a super rest of the day for all my malaysian people and for those of you overseas have a great night uh, sleep well and i'll see you on wednesday just know this god is good all the time and i love you so so much bye for now